So welcome to the serverless one-stop shop session, which we uh, a project we did for uh, for QDance. Uh, happy to do this on the Drupal Jam reboot. Uh, thank you for the organization to uh, to get this together. Yeah, I can imagine it's a lot of work and a lot of uh, uh, difficulties getting it uh, done in COVID times. But uh, I think they pulled off a great job. So uh, thanks for the organization. So um, an introduction. Um, well, I'm technical director at MediaMonks, uh, digital first creative company, and basically we, uh, I, I, I don't know how to keep this slide up to date, but I think we're almost 3,000 monks uh, nowadays. We have uh, so many offices, I don't know if the count is correct. Um, also, I don't really care anymore, it's, uh, we're still growing. And this, uh, this is QDance. And for those, those who don't know, this is uh, some footage of their event called DEFCON, DEFCON 1 Festival. Uh, usually they have it every year uh, at near the Walibi site. It's uh, a uh, camping ground and, uh, and a super large festival for like uh, 60 to 80,000 people. Uh, unfortunately, this year, of course, they, uh, they cannot do events due to, uh, due to the COVID situations. So that's really unfortunate, and they're uh, they're really struggling right now. So QDance uh, is part of the IDNT group, and they have their own events. I think most noted, uh, most notably, they have Climax and DevCon. The other ones are also pretty big, but maybe less known to the public. And they have their own hosted events on Tomorrowland and Mysteryland, which are also really large festivals. And uh, QDance fans are very uh, very loyal fans. And um, they like to buy merchandise. They go to every event that there is. Uh, they go to the camping grounds. Uh, they like to be there as much as they can. And um, basically, uh, before this shop, QDance uh, had several different uh, several different shops. They had a merchandise store. Uh, so you would need to go to merchandise to store.qdance.com. And if you if there was an event. Uh, you had to go to another URL if you wanted to buy uh, bus tickets to go to the event. You would have to go to another URL. And um, if you want to go to a hotel and have a ticket combo, then there was another URL. So that was a really uh, big frustration, basically, and a lot of mess also to deal with from uh, from QDance side. So we uh, we got a request for QDance to uh, which eventually turned into the project One Stop Shop as we call it, and basically what it does is we allow party people to buy everything they need for the event in a single purchase. So they can basically buy their entrance tickets. They can buy accommodation. So that could be hotel or um, uh, camping or uh, also other other. Um, things you can you can stay close to the event, and there's bus travel, so you can travel back and forth to uh, from a location near you to the event. Merchandise, it's like uh, t-shirts, uh, uh, caps, and uh, even uh, you can buy these uh, nowadays. Uh, also, parking lockers, and, and you can you can insure your entire stay at the event as well for a small fee. So of course there were some uh, uh, some main challenges here. Um, you you are dealing with different vendors because QDance isn't directly doing all these things. So there's a vendor for doing tickets. There's a vendor for doing merchandise. There's a vendor for bus travel, and all those need to come together in a single shop. And that means because under high pressure you cannot um, basically. Um, uh, call every vendor all the time and see like, hey, I want to buy this from you and I want to buy this from you and keep all the, the stock managed. So we decided to manage all our own stock. So basically upfront before the event, we import all the stocks from all the vendors and we manage all the stock in real time on our end. Also, um, it should be a single payment for the user. So the user should pay only once despite having maybe five vendors which they're buying from. And also, uh, they had the requirement uh, of having no running servers. And uh, that basically means uh, that we need to go serverless, which is uh, one of the most fun things uh, I'd like to do. So I was really excited about this. So uh, for, those, for those who don't know, uh, when is something serverless? Uh, it's, 
debated still what exactly is serverless, when is it, what is not, uh, what kind of service is serverless. Uh, in general, it means there's no provisioning, so you can just uh, enable it and get started. You don't have to configure your own system or such. It's auto-scaling, so it should uh, work without load, but also under high load, and it should auto-scale. You pay per use, so if it's not being used, it won't cost you anything, basically. And uh, it's also fault-tolerant by default, so it usually natively retries certain operations. So for this project, it means that we are using cloud-based management services like databases. Uh, we use functions as a service, so that's not it's not a uh, typical uh, Drupal setup or Symfony setup or Laravel setup where you create your whole application as code and deploy it to a single server. Instead, we have all these smaller functions which all have their, their own endpoint and uh, they are called like that as API. Also, we have a decoupled front end and uh, we're using a headless CMS and everything is event driven. So, um, of course, you're all dying to know how that looks like in the in the background. Let me quickly check if there's any weird stuff. Okay, no one is saying anything. So I'm assuming that everything goes well, despite maybe the audio. I'm trying to talk uh, not as loud as I usually do. So to, uh, to get technical, because um, that's, I think, the most interesting and hopefully where you can all learn something or get new ideas from. Uh, we have these components. So on the top left side, you see we have, of course, a front end, which is user facing. Then the front end talks to the API. And the API is uh, communicating with databases and file storage. And we have some background processes, which you see on the left side in purple, the stock sync and the card cleanup, which I will all describe in more detail in a bit. And in green, there's a small admin tool we, we created for this, uh, for this app. And then in the red part, there's the order handler, which is the most uh, complex thing as it's talking to all the vendors. Uh, as I, uh, I suppose maybe it was clear if you joined the previous session, I'm pretty fond uh, with uh, public cloud. Uh, this project is running on, on AWS and we're using uh, a lot of different services. Um, so the front end, the front is built not by us, it's built by, uh, by another, another company uh, they, I know they built it with Vue.js and they're using Contentful CMS, so uh, don't shoot me. They're not using Drupal, uh, but Contentful has been working really well for them. Basically, they, uh, they enter all the data there and whenever a new front-end build is done, it pulls all the data once from Contentful. It statically generates the entire site and then uh, puts it on an S3 bucket. So from the from architecture perspective, there's CloudFront, which is a, a CDN, uh, content delivery network, and basically it's the layer between the browser and the S3 bucket where all the files are stored. So if someone just goes to the website, it will statically load an index.html file from the bucket and all the assets. Then we have the uh, the API, and the API controls all the products, so which products are available, um, how you can add products to your cart or remove products from your cart. It will eventually, you can convert a cart into an order. And while doing that, there's a lot of business rules um, because these events are usually they're sold in phases. So at the first phase, uh, you are required to buy uh, your ticket together with an accommodation. Um, uh, and there's, there's a whole other bunch of rules uh, which, which can apply to an event. Like for instance, you can only buy four premium tickets maybe, or if you, um, if you buy premium, then uh, you can buy still an endless amount of other tickets. But all those business rules, they can manage per event. And if you don't comply with the business rules, you can still put it in your cart, but you can't, you can't convert it into an order. The project itself was created using serverless framework. It's an open source tool to manage and, and deploy serverless projects. Uh, it doesn't only support AWS, it also supports a lot of other cloud providers and you can also do local testing and such. It's basically a configuration with YAML and from YAML you point to the different endpoints that you have and you can create listeners and uh, it's, it's a really powerful tool and it, it makes it really easy to do serverless projects. I can really recommend you to check it out. 
So the uh, the API is written in uh, all, the, all the code written in Node.js, and what happens is that um, the browser, of course, again talks to the CDN, and that is communicating with API Gateway, which is a tool that can uh, where you can call these functions over HTTP. The Lambda is talking to an Elastic Edge Redis database, and despite uh, most usage of Redis is being a cache. Uh, we are using Redis as a persistent data store for many years, and we uh, we really like uh, working with it. So also for this project, we've decided to use Redis uh, because Redis is not only key value. With Redis, you can also do uh, lists and sorted sets and all other kinds of really cool things. Also, the bucket is interacting with an S3 bucket. Uh, as soon as you've finished your order, you've paid your order, we create one JSON file and we write it to an S3 bucket. Also, during peak sale, which is how we call it, uh, here you can see on the screenshot there's 32,000 people waiting in a queue. That queue is uh, something not on our end, it's with the payment provider. And basically, if you want to go to the website, you will be redirected to the queue. And if you are in the queue, you are at the end, then we, we basically let X amount of people per second into the actual site. And when that happens, you will get a token and when the API is getting a request to create a new card, uh, during peak sale mode, we require to have a valid token. And only with a valid token, uh, you can actually proceed shopping. If not, you, we will return an error and front end knows to redirect you back into the queue. Um, then the order handler, which was the, uh, the red part, which is the most difficult part also, the, the biggest challenge. Uh, it's responsible for sending emails to the user and also to inform all the vendors. And um, what's maybe good to know with, with all these functions that I described, these small lambda functions, uh, it's you would you would need to have some kind of plumbing, like you need to go from function one to function two to do certain things. And uh, this is a small example of a state machine. And as you can see. Um, when an image maybe comes in, when an image is uploaded, you can extract metadata, you can check if it's a valid file. So if it's a bitmap, you might not support it. If it's a JPEG, you do support it. And then in parallel, you run it through recognition, which is a service from Amazon where you can see what's in a, in a picture. And maybe in the meanwhile, also create a thumbnail. And when that's all done, it's done, then your state machine ends. So this uh, this system within AWS is called step functions, and you basically tie together all kinds of functions and can apply logic to things. So how we do this is, uh, as I said, if the order is uh, complete from a user perspective, we store a JSON file in an S3 bucket. When that is done, the event will be picked up by a Lambda, and it will start executing the order handler for that specific order. So that can mean that there's zero order handlers running at the same time, or it can mean that there's a thousand running at the same time. And the nice thing with serverless is that it, it doesn't really matter for us. It, it will just scale up and down automatically. So when the order handler starts, uh, you will immediately get a confirmation email. Thank you for your order. We'll be processing your order and we'll get back to you. Then there's a parallel task, depending on how many vendors you bought your products from. And those will all be queued. I will show you that in the next slide. And when all the vendor information is, is received, so if we have order IDs for all the vendors, you will receive a final details email. Like, thank you uh, for your order again. And uh, these are all the details from your order. So you bought tickets. This is the order ID from the ticket vendor. This is your order ID for the merchandise vendor because you bought a T-shirt. And this is your insurance ID. Um, and then when all is done, we move your order to a different place in the S3 bucket so we know it has been processed. So the informed vendor bit, it's, uh, it's parallel. It happens all at the same time. And we basically put everything in the queue and so that every vendor can, uh, we can send all the data to every vendor in its own pace. So if we, if we on our end have 1,000 orders waiting, uh, then we cannot over flood our vendors like, okay, boom, here's thousand orders because uh, maybe they cannot handle that load on their system as we do. So 
that's using the queue, it will just run at a, at a certain pace. So basically what the Lambda does, it informs the vendor and we write logs, both success or error to an S3 bucket. So if something goes wrong that we can investigate. And when the Lambda is complete, when the inform is successful, we basically set as part of the step functions process, we can put the order ID back into the main order handler. So then we have all the information to send the email to the user and all the vendors are informed and they just, from that moment on, every vendor handles their order by themselves. So that might be shipping a t-shirt or sending out an email with the ticket uh, confirmation. So there are also some background tasks because uh, stock updates is really important. Like you need to somehow inform your users that uh, tickets are almost sold out or that they already have sold out. Um, there's cars cleanup and that's really important because uh, once you put a project a product in your cart uh, it's yours so there's no need to rush through the entire system as long as you've selected those, those tickets and they're in your cart they're reserved for you for a certain amount of time there's also a countdown in the, in the page during peak sale mode i believe you have 10 minutes to complete uh, your order and of course if someone closes their browser or isn't uh, complete on time, then we need to take the cart, take every product from the cart and put it back into stock. Also, we have some dashboard updates running in the background. And for the uh, the cart cleanup and the stock updates, it, it was really important. Uh, well, it wasn't specifically a client request, but uh, something I wanted to do myself. I wanted to create some kind of system where I can um, update the front end to do the cleanup uh, in every, any kind of interval that I wanted. So during the peak sale mode, it's important that we do it really often, but outside of peak sale mode, it doesn't make sense to do it every second. So I was um, looking for some kind of system how we could say like, okay, now start doing it every five seconds and now do it every hour. But of course the difficulty is that if it's running once per five hours, then if I change it to go to five seconds, that change should happen Im immediately. And uh, that, that was a, quite a challenge. So in Amazon, you have something called CloudWatch and it, uh, it can trigger these crons. So it can trigger a signal every minute or every hour, similar to a cron uh, that will trigger a Lambda. But it can only go, go down to once per minute, which wasn't good enough for me. So then I started thinking, okay, maybe I can still use CloudWatch as like a backup and trigger Lambda the trigger is a step function and the step function should keep itself alive at all time. So I came up with the, uh, the dynamic cron system where I insert an interval. So that could be uh, in seconds, that could be one second, it could be uh, uh, 3,600 seconds for an hour or even, even I could set it to days. And what it does, it, it comes in, uh, I, need, I check if I need to kill a current instance of this same cron, uh, then I actually execute the function code that I want to do. So this part would be cart cleanup or the informing, uh, doing stock updates, sending it to clients. Then uh, I would keep a loop counter. And basically during evaluation, I check, okay, what's the amount of the counter? Is it higher than maybe thousand? Uh, then I restart. But if it's lower, I wait for the time in the interval and then I execute it again. And it will just stay in this loop for how long I want. And eventually there is a limit to amount of steps that the step function can have. So eventually I decide like, okay, this has been enough and I need to break out. And then I will have the Lambda create another instance basically of itself and the current one just ends. So that way there's a continuous loop. And if I feed it with a new interval, it will kill the current one and it will immediately take changes into effect. Also the, uh, the stock updates that requires us to push information to a client. And we were really thinking like, okay, we need to have some kind of WebSocket solution for this. And it turns out that AWS has something called IoT Core. And it is meant for IoT, which is not really what we're using it for, but uh, it allows you to set up a WebSocket connection with, uh, with the server. And the only thing we needed to do for this is get a, a pre-signed URL, just like with an S3 bucket, you can uh, in advance, generate a URL which contains a signature so you as an end user are allowed to do something with it. 
So we basically do the same thing for IoT Core. We pre-sign um, an IoT Core URL so the client is allowed to connect with it. And uh, we can then, from the step function, uh, trigger Lambda. It will read the stock details from Redis and it will push you to all the clients in real time. And we could do this as quick up to as to once per second even. And that's no problem uh, for IoT Core. It can handle up to 20,000 uh, updates per second. So that's, uh, that's really cool. Also, we have a small admin tool where you can manage events and manage which products are part of an event and manage those business rules. Also, you can uh, view order details and uh, do monitoring. And the admin tool is also just uh, a Lambda running behind the API gateway and it communicates with Elastic Cache Redis and DynamoDB. And also it can pull information from S3. And uh, then some things happened and we basically, we, we were talking to client that we wanted to basically make monitoring uh, a bit more important. And it turned out that it was using the event-driven architecture. It was really easy to add some things on top of that. So for, for monitoring, uh, as I explained, we have the JSON file coming in. It's being written to S3. It will trigger the order handler. And you can also uh, listen on the events from step functions because those are picked up by CloudWatch. And so you can also listen to changes happening on the step function. So if it starts, it triggers a Lambda. If it successfully completes, it triggers a Lambda. If there's an error, it triggers a Lambda. So basically what we do is we pick up those events and then we store all the order details uh, in DynamoDB. And we can do that for both seeing what products you bought and also if orders maybe failed or if they're successfully completed. And if there's an error, we also send out an email so that you immediately know that there's something wrong with an order. Also, this came in really handy um, due to COVID because as I mentioned, uh, QDance unfortunately cannot do any events now. So they're looking for alternative ways to, uh, to earn money. And one of those use cases is uh, participating in uh, an online quiz or an online stream. And uh, basically the only thing we needed to do is create a Lambda which uh, where you can pass the user's uh, credentials, the user's ID or token and the product ID. And then we could really easily look up in DynamoDB if the user purchased that product and return a true. And then the user could, um, could do something with that. So that's, uh, those are all really nice add-ons which you can do within uh, an event-driven uh, environment. Of course, there were uh, some learnings. Validation is hard. I think everyone knows. It, it gets even harder when you have different vendors which all have their own business rules uh, on, on how specific uh, user data is described. So um, one might need to have the, the zip code with a space and the other without. Uh, also, it happened that a specific vendor um, changed their configuration and didn't tell us. So suddenly all the, um, all the orders containing merchandise would fail. And then we needed to figure out what, what happened using, uh, using our logs. Also, the, uh, the business sometimes changes the stock without telling us. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we need to assume that the stock is only for us. So we're the exclusive seller of those products. Because if someone externally takes something from the vendor, we, we wouldn't know about it because we manage our own stock. So at some point it happened that someone from the merchandise team said, okay, let's I have another 100 t-shirts lying around here. I'll take them somewhere and I'll start selling them. And we weren't aware and orders which contained that t-shirt would just fail. Also at some point the dynamic cron stopped. Uh, because of a bug and uh, the card cleanup process wasn't triggered. So eventually the, it, the event was sold out while uh, there were plenty of tickets left. So we need to restart the cron and then it uh, suddenly worked again. Also brands have different needs. As I said, uh, QDance is part of the IDNT group and IDNT is also, uh, uh, it also B2S and uh, Art of Dance and Mystery Land Sensation Thunderdome. They're all part of the IDNT group. So that means that they might have their own vendors. So that means also that we might need to um, have the option to implement more vendors. And sometimes it can be a bit of a black box if you're dealing with all these different vendors and uh, because it's event driven, if something goes wrong, it can be sometimes difficult to figure out what's happening. For the future, 
Uh, we'd like to do more on order details, so you can actually view the entire order and all the product information that is associated with it within the admin tool. Also, we're working into onto uh, we're working on a wish list system where someone can maybe loyal fans can go up front into the store and create their entire entire cart. And when you when it actually the sale goes the goes live, you can log in. Uh, it will detect your wish list, and you go go straight away to checkout. Also, because we now really can keep track of what kind of products you're buying, um, we would like to look into personalization using machine learning. So maybe we can uh, know which kind of artist you're a fan of because you bought a T-shirt from a specific artist or you always buy VIP tickets for every event. Then next time we can maybe know like, okay, you always want to buy VIP. Um, so we push the VIP tickets to the uh, uh, to the front for the, for that user. Also, uh, it's very likely that more brands within the IDT group will be start uh, will be using this shop, and that also most likely there will be more vendors involved. So I think key takeaways is give Turtles uh, give it a try. It's it's really cool. I really recommend doing it with Turtles framework and not clicking manual things in the console. Um, also, I think Headless CMS uh, was a really good choice for uh, for this project. Um, I mentioned it was contentful, but it could easily have been uh, been Drupal. Um, Event-driven architecture, extremely powerful. You can just attach things without touching the original infrastructure. And also, it's very okay to use different databases, like we're using Redis for the actual API part as a persistent data store, but also we're using DynamoDB um, to do certain things. And maybe in the future, we also want to push things to Elasticsearch so we can uh, do uh, more statistics, or we can maybe use the uh, machine learning uh, personalization. We can use it with uh, Elasticsearch. Okay, so that's it. I hope it makes uh, it makes a bit of sense, and um, want to thank you for your time and thank you Drupal Jam for uh, for having me. So let's uh, switch back and see if you're still there, and then um, uh, hopefully there's some. Uh, some questions uh, that I can answer. Question from Leonard, did you use automated testing for this? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, we, we did use a lot of unit tests, so all the, all the code is unit tested. However, the entire flow, we didn't, uh, because that would, re would require us to mock all the external vendors um, which was a, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of work. Also, there wasn't time because we needed to have it ready for uh, for DevCon uh, event, and uh, so there was a lot of pressure on it. But we uh, we eventually did sell out DevCon uh, the entire event for sixty thousand people. We sold it out within the hour, and it was uh, really really cool seeing all the data flowing in and seeing the real time dashboards just upping these numbers with all the successful orders. Uh, during DEF CON, we, we, we had zero failed orders. So uh, you can imagine the, the, the rush we were in while we were seeing the numbers. Of course, we were on the phone with the client and it's, uh, everyone was really, really excited. More questions, please. Are there plans to host online parties now we are stuck with COVID? Uh, yes, it has already been done uh, many times because uh, all the events that they usually were doing are moved to online. With uh, with DEFCON uh, event, it was uh, their their biggest event of the year, which also was canceled. It would otherwise happened in, uh, in, in June, I believe. And uh, they turned it into a three-day online event called DEFCON at Home. And it was a really, really impressive uh, event. They actually went to the, uh, the site and they uh, had all the DJs there. They created an actual stage and it was really, really impressive. And uh, it, it was three days of entertainment for all the loyal Q-Dance fans. Uh, all the fans were asked like, okay, can you maybe um, keep your ticket? Uh, if you really want to, you can get your money back, but we are asking you if you can uh, keep your ticket, keep uh, so we can keep the money. And uh, using DEFCON at home was like their way of saying thanks to the community. 
uh, so just just like Drupal, also Q and Answers is, uh, is like a big family, and uh, it it, just, it was a really really nice event overall with the IDNT events. Also, Mystery Land had an online edition, and uh, they had all these uh, big uh, how to call them luchtballonen. Um, okay, so like these huge balloons. I don't I don't know the word right now, but it was uh, also really, yeah hot air balloons. Thank you, Eric. Um, so, so they really made something nice out of it, and uh, it's it's really special to see. Also, with sensation, which every year or, or there was a, a pause, but it would have happened this year again in the in the Amsterdam Arena, the Jong Cruijff Arena, and also that got cancelled, of course. And they they went there anyway and created a massive show, um, and uh, it, it's it's really impressive how IDNT and Q Dance are still trying to. Uh, keep the spirit alive by uh, yeah by doing nice events, doing something for the public, and uh, something really cool right now is if if you are into the music, I can uh, imagine that not everyone in the session uh, likes it. Maybe no one likes it. I don't know. Um, but the they're also their 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 second biggest event called Climax it happens every year in November. Also, that cannot happen. But they created a really nice video production. And I think it's going live in two weeks. And you can go to QDance.com and you can buy a ticket for 10 euros so you can see the live, uh, the, the actual movie that they created. Uh, you, you can see it there. So those are really nice ways to support a company. Also, as I said, like there, they are selling face masks and uh, they're selling, they're doing merchandise. So I also, as a, I decided to buy some merchandise from them just to give them some support, give them some love, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, they will manage to survive to uh, and can do real parties again next year. Although I, I just keep talking because there's no new questions and I have quite some time. Um, also, uh, I think COVID maybe also brings new opportunities. Like if next year they are again allowed to do parties, uh, now that they know how to do all the online stuff for events, it could be perfectly possible that they do also free days of live registration and get actual paid tickets for the live events too, uh, so that people from all over the world can actually enjoy it. Uh, so, so those are really nice things that they now had to figure out, uh, yeah, by the force of the virus. But uh, it's it's also new opportunities for the digital branch within the the IDNT group. More questions, please. Yes, definitely, Flores. Yeah, very interesting opportunities for VR. Um, uh, we, we are uh, very interested in doing that with them, as we also have uh, the knowledge on how to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if people will actually start doing it, but it, it would be a really fun, uh, a, a fun thing to try out uh, at some point. Yes, I agree. All right, I think there are no more questions. Um, so I, I assume everyone was either very clear or it was very complicated, <laughs> or, or maybe both. Um, I, I can really recommend you, if, if you want to see what, what kind of things they do, um, to go to YouTube and find QDance channel. There's, um, and, and may, or maybe search for QDance uh, um, What's it called? The uh, show must go on. It's it's a really nice fireworks video. It's, it doesn't feature any hard style. It features Queen uh, with the track The Show Must Go On. And and for them it was like the 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 end show of the, the, the DEF CON at home event uh, to just show like the show must go on. Uh, as a entertainment industry, we're dying, but we uh, we're keeping faith and we are just Hoping so much that we can do our our, uh, yeah, our passion of giving the best events in the world again uh, next time. So I thought that was a really strong uh, statement from them. Flores is putting it in the chat. Yes. Oh, it's the. Uh, that's not the official one. <laughs> Let me find that one. Although 
know I might like that one too. The uh, I'm putting it in, in the chat here. That's the official one with uh, with Queen. I think most people will enjoy this one uh, better than the hard style version. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sent the right one, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> Eric is tricking me. So I, th I think in, in general they are uh, working really hard on, on keeping things digital and uh, they are they're now pushing also with the use of this shop. As I said, it, it was really uh, a convenient way that we had this shop and it was very easy. I think it it took maybe uh, one day for me to add an endpoint which they could use to verify if someone actually pur purchased a product. And um, using a, like a monolithic setup that would have been much more difficult uh, perhaps. And now we could just create a small endpoint. It has its own stack within AWS. It can just talk to the resources, the other database. We just give it permission. It can read there. And then uh, it's a really reliable way of saying of seeing directly within a second after someone purchased the product they could watch the live stream because our systems know that they purchased it are there really no other questions okay i guess not all right um well, I can I can stick around if uh, if someone does have questions. You also uh, feel free to contact me uh, through LinkedIn or or email Robert at MediaMonks.com if you do have questions about the shop or how we did certain things. I'm I'm very happy to share. Uh, of course, these are the tricks of the trade, but I think it's very uh, nice to show you how we're using these techniques and uh, and also figuring out things on the fly because when the client came to us, also had no idea on how to do this. And I stumbled upon these step functions uh, via the service that uh, Amazon offers, and it seems like uh, it seems like a really really good fit. Also, uh, on the Azure side, uh, there's a thing called Logic Apps, which basically does the same thing. Uh, so you can also move it into another uh, another cloud if you prefer. Um, locally, I'm thinking uh, in the terms of. Doing this locally, I'm not sure if there's a replacement uh, of step functions which you can use locally or on your own on a private cloud. I'm not sure. Um, for for us, there's there's no need since uh, both QDens and us we are AWS is our prefer, uh, preferred supplier for cloud, so that was uh, very useful. Also, um, to continue that route with uh, looking at Flores' talk. Uh, this is definitely a project which you cannot run locally, not because of step function, but also we're using really specific features from, a uh, from AWS like uh, DynamoDB and, and uh, SQS to, uh, to do the queuing. Uh, so that's definitely, in, in, in that perspective, it's a full vendor lock-in. But uh, because it's, it's a serverless setup, it's really cheap to run. I think it costs less than, uh, than $200 per month to run this uh, while doing big events. So that's, uh, that's of course very, very cheap. Yes, Eric, I can, uh, I can send you the, uh, I can share the slide deck with you. I'm not sure if I can actually save it as slides. I would have to, uh, to look at that, but very happy to share them. Uh, yeah, potentially, yes. We will figure it out. All right. Um, well, I think, uh, Eric, if you're okay, I think it's maybe okay to uh, to sign off. I think people might want to have lunch according to the original schedule. Uh, thanks again to Drupal Jam uh, team for setting up this uh, really good conference. It's uh, I had a lot of fun also with uh, the pub quiz, although I didn't participate uh, because I came up with a lot of questions, but uh, I think it was a lot of fun and also uh, pulling people from the DA and over the camps. Uh, very nice job, uh, Drupal. Thanks, uh, Robert.